Does anyone want to explain, like if someone says, oh yeah, I'm my own bank, what do we mean by that? We have to recognize how and why the original banking system came to be and a little bit what's enabling the transition to Bitcoin and to the technologies that allow us to be our own banks, right? So centralized banking came to be because the investment and the systems really required sort of more capital at the time to sort of put that infrastructure in place. And I think what we've seen over the last 20 years, this transition into decentralized capabilities is now allowing that technology to shift and enable the technologies that support Bitcoin and the capabilities and the protocols. But I do think that there's a big learning curve, right? To transition people from that level of thinking and handholding to then being your own bank. For me personally, I love being in my own bank because one, I know exactly how much money I have. I know exactly how to access it. I know no one can take it. And it's very simple for me to send it anywhere that I want to or receive it from anywhere. I think there's a really good point there of the education piece where Janine talking about to relearn how to send a bank transfer every time that she does one. There's learning involved there as well. Like one of the big differences is when she affects that transaction, it disappears. It's gone. You don't know where it went. You don't really know how long it's going to take to get there. You trust that the bank will facilitate that and do what they're supposed to do. When you've educated yourself to a reasonable level, Bitcoin is, as an example, I can send a transaction and I can immediately go to the mempool and see it sit there and waiting. And then I can watch it get confirmed, you know, as soon as it gets confirmed. Then I go into the block and look in the block and see the transaction. Like it's very transparent to watch and, and feel a little more comfortable with your transaction versus a bank, which isn't the case. You just don't have the perspective in. Now there's the, the safety feature of the background of it being a bank and insurance and blah, 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 blah. But the transparency of the crypto space is, is a really powerful tool when you learn how to use it. When you stick your money in a bank, right, they're responsible for the vaults that is holding it without getting into the, the reality of how much cash actually sits in vaults, right? Conceptually, at least, we look at it from the standpoint of the bank is responsible for protecting it. The bank is responsible for the accuracy of the transactions being sent from one place to another. And we take all that on when we become our own bank. People who put money under their mattress, literally cash under the mattress. Think about the risks with that, right? Like your house could burn down. It could flood. The cash could get destroyed. Someone could steal it. It's not necessarily secured. But people still actually literally do that, sticking cash under a mattress or keeping it in their home somewhere where it's vulnerable to fire and water damage or theft. And they do that because it's not safe to keep it in a bank. And they think that the risks of keeping it under their mattress or in their home is less than the risks of keeping it in a bank in the jurisdiction that they're in. And that is sometimes true because there's all kinds of things that can happen with bank accounts and third parties custodying. First of all, not everyone can even get a bank account, right? There's many places on this planet where it's not available to you. And credit is also not available to you in every place around the world. And there's also like, you know, how safe is it? And can the government just reach into your bank account and confiscate your savings in order to fund money that they've spent? Well, that doesn't seem fair, but this has happened many times around the world and many times throughout history. Money is, it kind of represents your lifetime. Like you put in work or you put in capital to create more money and then you store it like a battery for later when you need it, right? To pay for your life. And if someone can just decrease the purchasing power of that money that you have managed to save up or that you have in your possession, it's almost like stealing away your lifetime. Like it's really offensive. <laughs> so I can see why folks are afraid of that. And they, you know, they want to take steps to protect themselves from having their purchasing power diluted. Those are all reasons why you would want to be your own bank. When you are your own bank, your bank moves with you right at the moment with uh, the Ukrainian refugees, but with everything we've seen over the last few decades with the, all of the refugees out of Southeastern Europe and stuff. I mean, you know, it might not even be that the bank necessarily or the government even necessarily initially tries to take your assets away from you, but you wind up in a situation where you have to like flee quickly or leave or travel. The, the city's being bombed. You don't have the ability to go into your bank and withdraw your cash to take it with you while you head someplace else. And with crypto, it just goes with you. It's it's wherever you are.